Hi guys, and welcome to the Is It Worth It for the Matilda 4, the Tier 5 Russian Premium Medium Tank. The tank is available from the Tech Tree for 1500 gold or from the gift shop. It's a tank that's available all year round. And the question we're asking today is, is this tank worth 1500 gold? So as per usual, let's start with the history of the tank. And uh, I'm going to try and focus as much as I can on the Matilda 4 or what's relevant to the Matilda 4. Because if I were to just talk about Matildas, we'd be here all night. It'd be a one or two hour video. So we'll try and focus on the Matilda 4. And even then, there is a heck of a lot of history. Um, so if we look up the in-game information here, uh, according to the in-game information, it's a British tank supplied to the USSR under Lend-Lease, a total of 1,000. 1,084 vehicles were sent to the Soviet Union, with some lost at sea during transport to Murmansk. Now this is true, but it's also leaving a lot of information out. Um, so we'll start with Lend-Lease. Now, from the game itself, from World of Tanks itself, you might be forgiven for thinking that the British sent a lot of tanks to the USSR as part of the Lend-Lease program, because you have the Matilda 4 and you have the Churchill 3 both appearing under the USSR tech tree. And while the British did send a lot of tanks to the USSR at the beginning of World War II as part of the Lend-Lease program, um, they were dwarfed. The uh, US actually sent a heck of a lot more. Uh, the USSR used a lot more M3 Lees and M4 uh, Shermans than they actually did British tanks. So about 3,000 uh, M3 Lees were shipped to the USSR as part of the Lend-Lease, and also about 5,000 M4 Shermans. So. Um, those tanks aren't represented in game, but the Matilda 4 and Churchill 3 are. Now, the Lend-Lease program was set up at the beginning of World War II because, again, it's uh, reflected in game with the Kharkov map. At the beginning of World War II, uh, Kharkov was the main tank production center for the USSR. It was a major railway hub and it was also the main tank production facilities. And uh, the USSR figured that the Germans would probably attack Kharkov in order to gain control of those facilities as quickly as possible if war were to break out. And therefore they moved their uh, tank production facilities from Kharkov to the Ural Mountains. What this meant was that there was a delay by one or two years while the USSR tried to get their tank production facilities back up into working order. They had to rebuild the facilities, they had to retrain the workforce, they had to set up production lines to get the raw materials to the new factories, and it meant that basically when the Germans invaded, the Russians were short on armor. So the Lend-Lease program was set up to ship uh, tanks from the UK and the uh, US to the USSR to fill in the gap until the USSR were able to pr uh, produce tanks by themselves. And as I say, there were a lot more US Lend-Lease tanks than there were UK Lend-Lease tanks, but the Matilda was one of them. Now, where did all of these tanks come from? Well, it just so happened that the Lend-Lease program set up just as the uh, Allies finished their North uh, African campaign. So most of the tanks that were shipped to the USSR by the UK and by the US were surplus, were decommissioned tanks that were left over or uh, had actually been previously fighting in North Africa. So a lot of the tanks had seen combat even before they were handed over to the USSR. With regards to the Matilda 4, uh, 1,084 Matildas were shipped to the Soviet Union, but only 918 arrived. Now, the tanks that were shipped to the Soviet Union weren't Matilda 4s, they were Matilda 3s. So where does the Matilda 4 come from? And let's get back to the Matilda 4, because this tank was a prototype, only one was ever built. So when it calls this a Lend-Lease tank, technically it's correct, but the version of the tank in-game was not what was shipped to the Russians. You see, the Russians took ownership of Matilda 3s and they weren't very impressed with them. The Matilda 3s main issues were that it only came with a two-pounder gun, and uh, as a result, it didn't have the penetration necessary to damage a lot of the German armor it was coming up against. It doesn't mean it didn't play a role. In fact, in the battle for Moscow around 1940, over 40% of the tanks involved on the Russian side in that battle were British Matildas. So uh, they were quite common, but they weren't performing very well. The Russians didn't light the guns. They didn't have enough penetration. But the other major issue that the Matilda had during uh, the uh, Lend-Lease program 
was its tracks and in particular its side skirting. So the Russians didn't like the gun, they didn't like the mobility, they didn't like the speed and these side skirts which worked fine in North Africa and in the desert on dry sand basically were a disaster when it came to winter in Russia because dirt and snow clogged up behind the uh, shields and between the tracks and basically froze and uh, made the tanks incredibly immobile, made traversing the tanks very, very difficult. And basically, Russian crews had to spend a long, long time removing side skirts, cleaning tracks, putting side skirts on, only to have to do the same thing day after day. So the Russians weren't very happy with the tank, but as I say, their main issue was the gun. Now, the Russian artillery division had an idea. And that idea was to take one of these Matilda 3s, and remember this is a Matilda 4, uh, but they took a Matilda 3, they removed the two-pounder gun from it, and they replaced it with a Zis 96, which was a 76 millimeter gun. Now, this was the gun that was in mass production for the KV-1. And uh, if we take a look at the KV-1, uh, where are we? Here we go. KV-1, stock gun on the KV-1 in-game. is a 76 millimeter Zis 5. So basically it's the same gun. Uh, so the Matilda was uh, had its two pounder and gun mount removed and it was replaced with the stock or the uh, main gun from the KV-1. And it's pretty much the same gun. The uh, stats are a little bit better on the Matildas for in-game and balancing purposes, but you can see it's basically the same gun. So the Matilda 4 was an experiment. It's basically a Matilda 3 with a KV-1 gun. Uh, other differences that were made to the tank during the uh, prototype stage were the tracks were redesigned so that they wouldn't collect as much dirt and snow and debris, causing them to lock up behind the side skirts. So metal strips were added to the tracks, but basically they're the main differences between the Matilda 3s that were shipped through Lendlease and the actual Matilda 4. Now the Matilda 4 never made it out of prototype stage and there are lots and lots of different reasons given. It's possible that they are all true. Um, one of the reasons is that the whole point behind this prototype was that the USSR didn't like the two-pounder gun. And around 1941, when this prototype was being developed, the British started sending uh, Churchills and Matildas armed with six-inch uh, howitzers. So those guns suited the Russians more than the original two-pounder guns on the Matildas. Um, there was also infighting between the artillery directorate, who were designing this prototype, and the tank directorate of the USSR uh, army. So the two of them came uh, head to head with a little bit of infighting and it's possible that the tank directorate won out and the artillery directorate scrapped this prototype. Another very very possible reason why this never made it out of prototype is by the time it was ready to enter field tests at the end of 1941, early 1942, the Russian tank production lines that were relocated from Kirkov to the Ural Mountains were actually beginning production. So uh, around the same time as this tank was due to come out of prototype status, the Russians began mass producing T-34s and KV-1s, so uh, it was no longer needed. But regardless, only one was ever built, and that's the version of the Matilda we have in game called the Matilda 4. So we're going to compare the Matilda 4 against all the other tier 5 premium medium tanks in the game and kicking off you'll see that we have 610 hit points which is always nice it's one of the original tier 5 premium medium tanks so 610 hit points matches the Black Prince the Ram 2 and the T25 only the two more recent additions the Hydrostat and the Chinakai have less hit points but it does mean that this tank is a little bit more survivability you can take one or two more shots than some of the other medium tanks can. It's quite a heavy tank. It comes in at 31 tons, so it's only slightly lighter than the Black Prince. It's about the same as the Ram 2, and it is significantly heavier than the other three tanks. But it does get a decent engine. It's not the best engine, but 274 horsepower engine means it's got a better engine than the Black Prince. In fact, it's a much, much better engine than the Black Prince, and it's even got a better engine than the Chinakai. Uh, however, it's a heavy tank. 
and that engine power and heavy tank means that its top speed is limited to 25 kilometers an hour. Now it looks pretty bad on paper, especially when you consider that it is only faster than the uh, Black Prince, but not by much, and it is significantly slower than any of the other medium tanks. However, the Matilda Black Prince's horsepower to weight ratio is terrible, and it means it very, very rarely reaches 22 kilometers an hour unless it's going downhill. Whereas the uh, Matilda 4 can easily reach 25 kilometers an hour. So it's a slow tank, but it's not as slow or as painful as maybe the Black Prince is. But it still is a slow tank. It is significantly slower than any of the others. So uh, it can reach its top speed. It reaches its top speed quite easily on uh, flat ground. But it also means that this tank doesn't struggle as much on hills. In fact, this tank is a hill warrior. And I'm going to go into that a little bit later on. But the the reason it's a heavy tank is because it has a lot of armor. You can see that the armor profile is very, very comparable to the Matilda Black Prince or the Ram 2. Uh, it's much, much better than the three remaining medium tanks, but uh, basically a lot of hit points. It's quite heavy and it has decent armor for a medium tank. And uh, that means its survivability is quite good when it comes to tier five medium tanks. Its hull traverse speed is on the low side at 35 degrees per second. And uh, it's similar to the Black Princes, but the other tanks, with the exception of the T-25, have it beaten. And uh, again, its turret traverse speed isn't fantastic either at 34 degrees per second. It's not terrible, but definitely compared to most of the other tanks, it's fairly average, maybe even below average. Um, so pretty average traverse speed all around on this tank, and it means that while enemy tanks or fast enemy tanks may have trouble circling you to death, there are plenty of low tier tanks that can circle you to death and give you a lot of problems. The view range on the tank is very, very good for a tier 5 medium tank at 350 meters. Now, if you put binox or coated optics on this tank and have a decent crew, you can get that view range up quite a lot. Uh, with a decent crew or 100% crew and binox, I've got my view range up to 446 meters, which is very, very good for a tier 5 medium tank. So view range is definitely one of the Matilda 4's uh, strong points. The signal range is not the best, but it's actually pretty good. 570 is a decent uh, signal range for a tier 5 medium. It matches the Black Prince and the Ram 2 uh, better than the Chinakai's and only the T25 and Hydrostat have it beaten. So uh, it's got decent view range and it's got decent signal range. So overall it's a medium tank that plays like a heavy tank. It's quite slow but it does have a lot of survivability thanks to some decent armor and decent hit points. Uh, it's got very good view range, very good signal range and two of the more negative points are its hull and turret traverse speed, but when you consider it's a heavy tank and take that into context, then the traverse speeds aren't that bad. So the stats for the Matilda 4 are looking quite positive at the moment, and another positive for this tank is that it gets special matchmaking. The tank will never see tier 7s. It's a tier 5 tank, but it will only see tier 5s and tier 6s. So special matchmaking for this tank is very, very nice. Another positive is the Matilda 4's really, really good gun depression. It has over 13 degrees of gun depression, over 20 degrees of gun elevation, and it makes the tank a hill warrior. So like the Matilda Black Prince, which can fight on hills, the um, Matilda 4 does really, really well as a hill warrior, but it has the added advantage of having a half decent engine. So you don't struggle going uphill. It's still very, very slow, but it's not painfully slow. And you can get the tank up to the top of rises, up to the top of ridges far, far quicker in order to use this gun depression and gun elevation to your advantage. So after getting a shot into the E2, I'm relocating, and as you can see, I'm not incredibly fast, but I'm a lot faster uphill than a Matilda Black Prince is. And I'm going to be using my amazing gun depression, because this tank is definitely a hill warrior. And there we go. So I'm at tier 5, tearing a tier 6 apart. Look at the DPM. Look at the gun depression. 
And there we go. That was a very, very quick 521 damage into a tier 6 tank. So this is definitely a hill warrior. So let's talk about this gun. Uh, it comes with a 76mm ZIS-96. Now, to all intents and purposes, this is the stock KV-1 gun, as mentioned earlier in the video. At first glance, this gun looks very, very good. It's a very nice caliber. A 76mm, it's basically a heavy tank gun on a medium tank. It's got a very, very nice rate of fire of 16 or over 16 rounds a minute. And it's got alpha damage of 110. So you have got 16 rounds a minute each capable of doing 110 damage it means that the dpm on this tank is close to 1800 and you can get that over 1800 with equipment and crew skills and combined with its great gun depression and gun elevation this is looking to be a very very good gun 0.41 accuracy is fairly average or maybe even below average. This is a Russian gun, you've got to remember. So 0.41 accuracy is actually pretty good for a Russian gun, but overall 0.41 is fairly average or even below average. So the accuracy could be better. However, it's got very, very good aim time at 1.7. So it's very rapid firing, but it's also got a fast aim time. So you don't run into the same problem as you do with the Ram 2 or the Matilda Black. Black Prince. The rate of fire matches up with the aim time very, very well, and uh, the delay between shots will give your gun time to fully aim. What lets this gun down, in fact, what lets the entire tank down, is its penetration. Yes, there had to be a big, big negative in there, and it's not just a big negative, it is a huge negative. It only has 86 millimeters of penetration with its standard AP. Now, what happens on a lot of medium tanks that have bad penetration on its standard AP is Wargaming give it decent uh, premium ammo. That doesn't happen in the case of the Matilda 4 because the premium ammo on the Matilda 4 is only 102 millimeters of penetration. It's better than the standard AP, but it is still absolutely terrible. I have absolutely no reason why, or no idea why the penetration is so bad on this tank, but it is incredibly bad. Um, just to put it into context, the next worst penetration on any gun of any of the tier 5 premium medium, to medium tanks is the Ram 2. And the Ram 2 gets 105 millimeters of penetration with its standard AP. That's more penetration than the premium ammo on a Matilda 4. And when that penetration is not good enough, it has premium ammo that has 170 millimeters of penetration. So you can hurt pretty much every tank you face in a Ram 2. The Matilda Black Prince is exactly the same story. It has standard penetration of 110 millimeters, which is much better than the premium, uh, premium ammo on the Matilda 4. But even if you come up against tanks you can't penetrate with 110, and you do, you've got very good premium ammo that has 180 millimeters of penetration. So you can hurt pretty much most of the tanks you're going to be facing in the Ram 2 or the Matilda Black Prince. Not so in the Matilda 4. Unfortunately, the Matilda 4 is incredibly frustrating to play down to this incredibly bad penetration. There are lots and lots of tanks you're going to be facing in the Matilda 4 that 86 millimeters of standard AP penetration is going to be able to tear apart. Lots of tier 4s, tier 5s and tier 6s. Heavy tanks. You will be able to penetrate uh, tier 5, tier 6 heavy tanks if you get to their sides and rear with 86 millimeters of penetration. It's possible, uh, but it's also very, very situational and very, very difficult because the Matilda 4 is not a fast mobile tank and getting to the sides and rear of heavy tanks or enemy heavy tanks is very, very difficult. So uh, your standard AP just doesn't cut it and you are going to be running into a lot of heavy tanks in your Matilda 4 because it plays like a heavy tank and uh, as a result, you're going to come up against KV-1s, KV-1s, KV-85s that you basically cannot hurt, even with your premium ammo. If they are angled whatsoever, even your premium ammo is going to do absolutely nothing to them unless you can hit weak spots. Now, 
in order to hit weak spots you're going to have to be very very close in the Matilda 4 because as I say the accuracy is not fantastic and trying to snipe weak spots with your AP or premium ammo at anything longer than medium distance with this gun is very very difficult and again penetration drops off at distance so there's a very good chance that those shots are going to bounce anyway. So here's the first of some examples of the incredibly poor gun. Fortunately, missed my shot in the move on the PC-3A, but I'm here on Kamaran. I am top tier. Unfortunately, our other top tiers are all medium tanks. Enemy team have a heavy tank, but they also have an AT-2. So I've gone to the island to do the medium tank or the heavy tank roll. We don't have any heavy tanks. Now this AT-2, I was. This is one of the first games while I was testing the tank for the review. So I was happy with that kill on the PZ-3A, so standard AP, bounce on the front of a Stug. Now, as soon as the AT-2 appeared, I should have run away. So look at this, I'm bouncing, finally managed to pen. Oh, oh, AT-2 is coming, he has no problems penning me. I bounce on him, so I've switched to premium ammo. And I'm thinking, absolutely no problems, let's just pen his cupola. And I've got an orange reticule, I can't pen his cupola. I don't have the alpha damage to track him. My only chance is to get around. My premium ammo bounce on the front of a Stug. Premium ammo bounces on the front of the Stug. Finally get a pen in, but the AT-2 is able to turn around. Deal some damage. This Stug is going to kill me. But there you go. You don't even have enough penetration with your premium ammo to reliably go through the front of a Stug 3. You don't have enough penetration on your standard AP or your premium ammo to even go through the weak spot on an AT-2 from the front. Um, this tank really, really frustrates and that's just the first of some examples. So here's another example. We are here on Swamp. Again, I am top tier. Now, normally in most tanks, I'd be happy to be top tier, but I'm looking at the enemy team and I see a KV-1, a KV-1S and a KV-220. And I'm thinking to myself, oh boy, I hope they don't come to my flank. So we'll put it on normal speed. Now this is again is one of the first games I was playing in the tank in order to get some footage for the review. You can see me testing the gun depression, amazing gun depression. Now I'm testing the gun elevation, amazing gun elevation. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay. This has possibilities, so because I've got amazing gun depression and gun elevation, I'm going to work the middle. I'm going to try and work the middle ridge. I'm going to cross my fingers and pray that the KV-1, KV-1S and KV-220 haven't come this flank. So, going to try and use my gun depression. Nope. And a PZ-1C. Okay, no problems. And something has just shot and damaged me. And it's the KV-220. And the first thing that goes through my mind is, oh, bugger. And he's brought friends. There's a KV-1 here as well. PZ-1C is running for it. And I've got an orange reticule on the side of a KV-1. Now he's facing me. Using premium ammo. He's angled, bounce on his side, going for his weak strip. And again, it bounces. The gun is not accurate enough to hit weak spots at even medium distance. So KV-220 is moving up, KV-1 is moving up, and now, oh bugger, there's a KV-1S on the other side. And there is absolutely nothing I can do against these tanks, so I'm trying to get out of here. And I'm taking fire. You can see that the tank is not fast enough to get out of that bad situation. My team are giving me no backup. Our top tier heavies have gone the other flank. And because you're playing tier 5 in this tank, because your top tier heavies are usually very, very inexperienced or just not very good players, they usually don't make the right decisions. You usually end up having to play the role of heavy tank. I've had to get out of there. I've got three tanks moving in on me that I know I absolutely cannot pen. I'm trying to defend. I'm still on my premium ammo. Aim at the weak spot, but the gun is just not accurate enough. Finally get a shot in. Look at that. Again, gun is just not accurate enough to snipe weak spots. Look how high that shot went. 
I've got a good crew in this tank, but the gun is just not accurate enough. The penetration is just not good enough, even with premium ammo. And because I'm firing premium ammo, I'm making a loss. So now I've got nothing to do. I've got no backup. I'm going to try and defend. So a locust comes flying in. Get one shot in. There's a KV-1S in cap. I ignore the locust. He's able to pen me. And again, look how wide that shot goes, even though I'm aiming for his weak spots. That goes high. That goes low and to the left. That goes high, actually manages to do pen his turret. That goes so far to the right. And we've pen him again with a lucky shot through the track. But you can see that the gun is not accurate. The penetration is lacking. It's just a bloody frustrating gun to try and play with. It all depends on the matchmaker and what tanks it puts on the enemy team. Another negative for the tank is its ammo capacity. It only carries 60 shells. So um, you do the math. This tank can fire over 16 shots a minute and you only get 60 shots. So uh, this is a tank, if you spam a lot of shots, if you're firing a lot of shots, you may find yourself running out of ammo very, very quickly. The ammo capacity is not very big. Just another thing to keep an eye on if you decide to go for a Matilda 4. So the major letdown for the Matilda 4 is its gun. And uh, yes, this tank gets special matchmaking, but to be honest, I think it needs special, special matchmaking. Because if this tank gets into a tier 6 game, there's a very good chance you're not going to be able to hurt very many of the tier 6s you're facing, and they're just going to tear you apart. But even if you get this tank into a tier 5 game and you are top tier, and there are a lot of heavy tanks on the enemy team, a lot of KV-1Ss, a lot of uh, KV-1s, Churchills. Um, this tank is really, really going to suffer, even when it's top tier, even when it is firing premium ammo. Uh, so, really, it's a very, very situational tank. And I'm not going to say you can't have good games in it, but it really, really depends on the matchmaking. It really depends on whether or not you're top tier. And it really, really depends on how many heavy armored tanks there are on the enemy team. But it is possible to have decent games with this gun. Now, I probably have another half dozen <laughs> replays or clips showing you where I run into heavy tanks and I'm absolutely helpless. Can't do anything to stop them, can't hurt them, or certainly can't out DPM them due to the accuracy. I may get one or two shots in, but they kill me before I can kill them due to bounces, due to shots not going where I'm aiming them. But sometimes, the gun does work and the standard penetration on the AP uh, is very, very good and can penetrate heavy tanks, even difficult tanks from the side and rear if you get are lucky enough to get side and rear shots. So the view range is also very, very good. So I am going to be pushing up. I'm going to be using my gun depression. I'm going to be using my view range. And there are a lot of dangerous tanks on the enemy team. There's a Churchill 1, a K two KV-1s, and a KV-1S, all of which I'm going to have trouble with, or have had trouble with in this tank when I've got to deal with them face to face. But in this situation, I don't. So you can have good games in this tank. This is a very good showcase of the DPM. And bad shot by me. I probably shouldn't have gone for that shot. But I'm looking for targets I can pen. So, oh, he stopped. So I've got an orange reticule. And I'm bouncing, so zoom in, aim better. Bounce again. Finally manage a pen. So even at distance, this tank or this gun can troll you. So finally get another one in and another one in so the accuracy is okay at distance providing you're shooting at the uh, side and rear of enemy tanks but again the accuracy is not fantastic and you're not, definitely not going to be able to hit weak spots at distance so I'm just looking for shots and there's a Churchill 1 to my left now if he 
decides to angle, if he decides to face me, I'm going to have problems. But again, a shot in the rear of an Su-85 goes high. And he dies before it can get another shot in. So I'm being spotted. There is RT in this game. In fact, there are three RT. I'm in a slow tank. I'm trying to stay on the move. And there's my view range. So I've spotted the Churchill. He's not angled. He's facing me side on. And look how quickly he's on 700 hit points. Now he's on 368. You can see how quickly this gun can fire when it gets side shots on enemy heavies. So I'm staying on the move to try and avoid RT. Unfortunately, one of them hits me. And I'm firing on the move. And there we go. So I've done all 700 damage against that Churchill in just a few seconds. So that was with standard AP. That wasn't using premium ammo. But you see the DPM on the tank is good. The gun is good, providing you don't have to deal with enemy tanks frontally. The accuracy is okay. Nice shot in that Crusader. He stops. And we finish him off for kill number two. So the accuracy is okay, providing you don't have to hit weak spots. The downside is you have to hit weak spots with this gun, usually. So there's kill number three. I'm on 1200 damage. Don't remember if I get anything else out of this game, but I'm slow, so cleaning up at the end of games is not great. So I'm just going to sit up here. There's Arty. Get one shot in. Someone else takes him out. So the gun is fine. The gun is good, providing you can get side and rear shots on enemy tanks. It's a big, big problem when you're trying to face them head on. Uh, but at least that example shows you the DPM and the accuracy. When you're shooting at the side of a tank, you don't have to worry about hit po or weak spots that much. But it's not an accurate gun and uh, the penetration does lack. So let's talk about crew. And the Matilda 4 has a commander, a gunner, a driver and a loader. And my T-54 crew are in here and it matches perfectly. So is it a good crew trainer? I would have to say it's okay. It's really up to you. You see, there's a problem. Well, it's a good problem, but there's a problem nonetheless. There are a lot of medium tanks on the Russian lines and uh, I believe they start at tier 4 with the T-28, but a uh, lot of lower tier medium tanks on the Russian line. So for example, the lower tier medium tanks do not match the crew configuration of the Matilda 4. Even the T-34-85 doesn't match the crew configuration, you end up having an extra radio operator. Uh, when you come to tier 7, you get the T-43 which is a perfect crew trainer and uh, same crew layout and that continues from the T-43 to the T-44, T-54, T-62A and Object 140. So going down one medium line, uh, it's not a great crew, tra crew trainer until you reach tier 7 and then it matches up perfectly with the remaining medium tanks. But there is another medium line and again lower tier tanks on the A-43 line you need a radio operator. On the A44, you need an, another radio operator. Uh, however, after tier 7, when you come into the object 416 at tier 8, then you'll find it starts to match up perfectly. So the object 416, the object 432, and the object 430 all have the same crew configuration. So when it comes to crew training, um, it really only matches one of the tier 7 mediums and pretty much all the tier 8, tier 9 and tier 10 medium tanks for the Russians. So if you've got higher tier Russian tanks then yeah it's a good crew trainer. But if you're starting out in the game or if you don't have higher tier Russian medium tanks it's not fantastic. It's okay you're going to have to find radio operators from other places but uh, it's okay. I mean it is a perfect crew trainer for later tiers it's an okay crew trainer for lower tiers, but it's not perfect. 
So let's talk about equipment, and the Matilda 4 doesn't have very many equipment choices, so we're going to start at the top with the toolbox, and a toolbox is a very viable piece of equipment. And the reason is that the Matilda is quite well heavily armoured. It's got decent side armour of uh, 70 millimetres, and on top of that, the uh, side skirting here is slightly spaced armour. So you can side scrape in this tank very, very well. It does do quite well on city maps, providing you're not facing down tanks the gun can't penetrate. But uh, you will find your tracks getting hit a lot. You will find your tracks eating a lot of shots if you know how to side scrape. So a toolbox is always handy to get those tracks up. Also, because it's a slow tank, Artie likes to target you. So if you get hit by Artie, there's a very good chance they're going to blow your tracks off. Toolbox is very, very viable. And if I had a spare equipment slot, I would probably put a toolbox on. An enhanced gun laying drive, in my opinion, is not worth it for the tank. Plus 10% aiming speed is nice, but this tank has a 1.7 second aim time anyway. It matches well with the reload time of the gun. So you really, really don't need to enhance it that much. And I would much rather use the equipment slot for something else other than improving my aim speed, but it is completely up to you. Uh, coded optics is viable. Uh, the tank has 350 meters of view range, so coded optics will take you up to just under 400 meters. I prefer getting up to the magical 450 meter view range, so I tend to go for binox over coded optics. Also, I tend to get onto uh, big open maps quite a bit in this tank, and I don't think the tank is fast or maneuverable enough to uh, warrant coated optics. I think moving forward, letting your binox kick in, seeing if you spot anything, and then moving forward works better for me than coated optics do, but it is completely up to you. Binox or coated optics is a choice completely down to your playstyle. A medium tank gun rammer is a decent choice for this tank because it gives you plus 10% to DPM. And uh, you are going to be firing a lot of shots in this tank and because of the low uh, penetration on the AP and premium ammo, you're going to be bouncing a lot of shots and you really, really want to get your rate of fire up to make up for those bounces, to make up for those misses due to the very average accuracy. Um, I just prefer putting out shots very, very fast in case some shots miss, but again, completely up to you. I just like having more DPM and I do recommend a gun rammer. A medium spall liner is a very, very viable piece of equipment on this tank. In fact, we were just talking about the gun rammer. If I had a choice, or if you were going to force me to make a choice, I would probably remove the gun rammer and put a spall liner on. I prefer having the gun rammer, but not by much. Um, because this tank does have some spaced armor, HE doesn't hurt it as much as other tanks do. And you come up against a lot of tanks firing derp guns at tier 5 and tier 6. You also get targeted by RT, or at least I do quite a bit. So a medium spall liner while I was testing this tank in order to get footage for the review is something I was playing around with putting on the tank. Um, if you find yourself taking a lot of HE damage, if you find yourself getting targeted by HE a lot, then a spall liner is a very viable piece of equipment. Um, the HE doesn't hurt as much in this tank as it does in other tanks, and the spall liner would just make it even better. Uh, wet ammo rack, I think, is a complete and utter waste of money. Can't remember being ammo racked very much in this tank at all, and I think there are far better equipment choices. Improved vents is something I try and put on as many tanks as I can, providing I've got the spare equipment slots, because 5% to all crew skills basically means that means the tank is 5% better in every way. So I do prefer vents for that extra view range, I do prefer vents for that extra rate of fire, extra accuracy, but again, it is completely up to you. You might prefer something else on the tank. And a camo net, I don't think is viable on the tank. That's very rare, I will say that, for a tank, but yes, uh, there are situations where the Matilda 4 needs to be used as a sniper. The problem is, it's not a very good sniper. The accuracy isn't there, and the penetration isn't there. So sometimes you're forced into a support role in this tank, and I really don't think the camo net's going to help you that much. Um, it's completely up to you as to how you decide to play the tank, but I think the other equipment choices are more viable. This tank can be used as a sniper, but it's not very good, and it's all down to that poor accuracy and poor penetration. So I really don't think sniping with binox and a camo net are worth it. But again, equipment choices are just my opinion. It is up to you on how you decide to play the tank. 
Okay, folks, it is time for the overview game, a game where I show you as many strengths and weaknesses of whatever tank I'm reviewing in one replay. And it is fitting that we are here on Kyokov because I mentioned Kyokov at the start of the review. Uh, because the USSR had to move its tank production from Kyokov to the Urals, it meant that they were short on armor, which led to the Lend-Lease program, which led to the Churchills and this Matilda ending up in the USSR. So, uh, as I say, we're here on Kyokov, and the first thing I need to do is look at the enemy team, and I'm seeing a Churchill 1, I'm seeing a T-14, I'm seeing a KB-1. Even the VK-3001H frontally can cause me problems. They've also got a lot of fast TDs, but I'm advancing, I'm trying to be a heavy tank. I'm hoping to run into tanks I can pen with standard AP. I see a Churchill to my left. I'm angling, advancing at an angle. And I'm hoping to run into enemy tanks. So there's a T-40. Now his view range, a stationary, is better than mine on the move. But I'm at an angle. Get one shot in. There's the accuracy. Miss that shot. Get another shot in. I'm angled. He bounces. And I'm able to take him out for kill number one. A quick 275 damage. So again, I'm advancing one RT on the enemy team. Going to try and do some side scraping just to see what's around this corner. Don't spot anything. And I'm advancing now. I'm hoping to flank this Churchill. I'm hoping to get to his side and rear, but I notice he's coming towards me. And oh, bugger. So, should have gone for his turret there, but bounce with regular AP. Get a nice shot on the Martyr. And now there's a VK in the distance, but I'm side scraping. Bounce the Martyr, get one shot in. And take him out for kill number two. But the Churchill's advancing. Still on regular AP. He's firing HE for some reason. So I track him. And now I'm wondering what are my options here. I can't deal with this guy head on. So I'm thinking about backing away. You've constantly got to think about what you can penetrate and what you can't in this tank. But this VK is advanced. He's giving me a side. We can put another nice shot in. Nice high roll. Want to keep this Churchill tracked if I can. But I lack the alpha damage. Miss another shot on the VK. So I'm just waiting for this Churchill to advance so I can track him. Otherwise, I'm going to go for the VK, but orange reticule on the uh, front of the turret. And there's no way I can engage these tanks. I can't invade and uh, engage the VK at distance, can't invade, uh, engage the Churchill. The gun just isn't good enough, and you've got to constantly think about this when you're driving the Matilda 4. So I'm not a fast tank, but I've decided to relocate. Because there's no point, absolutely no point in me engaging those tanks. I am just going to die, or I'm just going to waste a lot of ammunition. So I've decided I'm going to flank the Churchill. He's engaging another Churchill. And because I've got side shots just in a previous replay, I can pen the side of the Churchill, no problems. So he's got a PZ-1C for company. He's facing me. He's hulled down. I'm trying to angle. Want to get eyes on him. There he is. Miss my snapshot or bounce it. But I decide to advance. So again, I'm advancing at a slight angle. He's engaging someone else. Okay, that's fine. He's tracked. Let's keep him tracked. So I track him, move back into cover so he can't return fire. And now it's just a matter of tracking him again. Not sure if he can hit me, but I've got side shots. Get one shot in. Track him. Oh, and he can pen my turret. So get another shot into his side. Track him again. Now I just need to get one more shot in. There we go. And that's kill number three. But uh, as I say, constantly maps or enemy lineups leave you or make you think when you're driving this tank. It's not like a lot of other tanks where you can just relax and take on enemy tanks frontally. You simply cannot do that in the Matilda. And because you don't have the speed or maneuverability to be able to flank enemy tanks unless you're on a map like this, um, the tank really is limited in so many ways. 
So, PZ1C, VK, SU up here. VK gets taken out. But I'm on 1100 damage. PZ1C is a one hit kill. We take him out for another 95 damage, uh, or 55 damage, and kill number four. Two enemy tanks left, a very dangerous T-67 and an Su-85. Now this tank is quite good at shooting on the move because it's a slow tank. We bounce our first shot, but we do hit our second shot. And we're just shooting on the move here. Again, bounce on his gun mantlet. But able to angle, able to bounce his first shot, he pens his second shot, we take him out. So there's kill number five. And uh, game is over. So it's possible to have really, really good games on this tank, but you've constantly got to be aware of what tanks you can pen, what tanks you can't, and you've got to cross your fingers that you're going to be able to get onto a map where you don't have to go head to head against enemy tanks and where the opportunities to flank are available to you. Okay, folks, time to sum up. Is the Matilda 4 worth 1500 gold or 750 gold if you decide to pick up the tank on a half price special and that happens two or three times a year. Well, there's actually a lot to like about this tank. Um, it's very, very well armored for a medium tank, reasonably well armored for a tier five tank. It has some nice spaced armor on the sides, which means that HE doesn't do as much damage to you or Splash doesn't do as much damage to you as it would in other tanks. And because you've got fairly decent armor with 610 hit points, it means the survivability of the Matilda 4 is very, very good. Uh, it's got amazing gun depression and very, very good gun elevation. So this thing is a hill warrior. You can use it very, very effectively on hills. It has a reasonably powerful engine, so even though its top speed is not fantastic at 25 kilometers an hour, you can reach that top speed quite well, and it's not as much of a situational tank regarding its speed as, for example, the Matilda Black Prince is. You can accelerate, you can get to the top of hills, and you can use that gun depression. So it's a slow tank, but it is not horribly slow. But what it does mean is that you can get yourself into positions, and you're just not quick enough to get out of those positions, or run away if the enemy team decide to rush you. Uh, it is a medium tank, and I would expect to be able to do that in medium tanks, but you can't do that in the Matilda 4. The view range is excellent, especially with equipment, and the signal range is pretty good too. So you can play this tank quite passively and use it as a spotter. However, Playing passively and maybe using it as a spotter and a sniper may not be the best way to play this tank. In fact, it's very hard to categorize this tank because it's definitely not a sniper. It doesn't have the penetration on its gun. It doesn't have the accuracy on its gun to be a sniper. But at the same time, if you're playing this like a heavy tank and you're on the front lines, then unfortunately you might be running into tier five heavy tanks or heavily armored enemy tanks at tier five and tier six that you simply cannot penetrate with either your standard AP or your premium rounds. Um, this tank really, really suffers and it really is dependent on the matchmaker. If you can get top tier and there are very few heavy tanks on either side, this tank is a very, very good tank. It's got amazing DPM, providing you can actually pen enemy tanks. On the other hand, if the matchmaker is being cruel and you're getting into tier 6 games or even top tier into tier 5 games and you're, there are a lot of tier 5 heavies on the enemy team, then this tank is still very, very situational and it's possible you may find yourself the last man standing against multiple heavy tanks that you cannot do anything against. The gun is only good enough if you can get to the side and rear of enemy heavies and that doesn't happen very often because the tank is so slow and so unmaneuverable and also because a lot of maps in World of Tanks are designed around choke points. So you're going to be facing down a lot of enemy tanks head to head and in those situations the gun is very, very lacking. It's a decent crew trainer, but again, it's situational. It depends on whether or not you've got high tier Russian medium tanks. If you're still on mid tiers and low tier medium tanks, it's not a good crew trainer. If you're on higher tier tanks, it's fine. It's a very, very good crew trainer. And when it comes to crew training, I've got to be honest with myself and say that I would much rather train up a Russian crew in a tank like the A43 or the A44, standard tanks from the tech tree, rather than the Matilda 4 premium tank. 
because those tanks aren't situational. Those tanks are fun to play, those tanks are competitive, even when they are bottom tier. And the problem with the Matilda 4, and I never thought I'd say this after playing the Matilda Black Prince, but the problem with the Matilda 4 is it's just not competitive. It may not be as frustrating to drive as the Matilda Black Prince is, but it's just as frustrating when it comes to matchmaking because of that penetration. I think the gun really, really kills this tank for me, and I really, really can't recommend it. I don't think it's worth it, and I don't even think it's worth it at 750 gold. I think you'd be far, far better off keeping an A43 or an A44 in your garage and using those tanks to train up new crews. If you're looking for a Russian medium tank to double train existing Russian crews, then... Yeah, the Matilda 4 is the only choice. There are no other premium medium Russian tanks in the game. In that situation, maybe on events like today where it's a times three, in those situations it might be worth spending gold on it uh, in order to give a crew a double workout, but uh, it's really up to you. And um, I don't see myself playing this tank very, very much after this review is done. Sorry folks, I just don't think it's worth it. It's a decent tank, but the gun and its penetration kill it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.